Welcome once again, faithful adherents to our almighty FEMA. I have come to you again, on this first day, of the fifth week, in the year of our Lord Ordo at Chaos 279, to further your instruction on matters of the past. The divine propaganda, the everlasting gift, given to us by the suffering saint, Lord Benito Mussolini, is unto itself a truth, that continues the maintenance of our order. It nourishes our understanding of the random world with artful speech, that reaches beyond the imprisoning laws of reason. It brings us to true understanding. In the before time, it often fell in, and out of favor, as it battled with logic for prominence in the minds of the uncertain. The purveyors of logic, the arcane philosophers, that kept to the covenant of nations, would often deride this holy tool as idle speech, denigrating its artful points as bromides or doublespeak. speak. The original holy writ, that established the covenant of nations, was even more cruel, calling it sin, and accusing it of promoting the destruction. Though in the time of reckoning, when the divine propaganda was put into service for the hidden powers, the magi of media were split between those defending the covenant of nations and those who supported the new order, a unifying voice would emerge in Saint Mussolini. As a member of the Magi, he understood the power of words, but more importantly, how the manipulation of definitions and terms could destroy the hold that the Covenant of Nations had upon the world. His students, Lord Stalin and Lord Hitler, when faced with challenges that artfully crafted vocal and written manipulations could not alone defeat, perfected the form with the introduction of images. Such amazing feats of propaganda filled the visual mediums, pulling away the political agnostics from the printed words that bound them to their obsolete covenant. Men of learning became men of action, spreading the will of their controlled governors by both force and tact. Books containing things contrary to the parties in power were censored with little complaint, and truth became less a permanent word and more of a flexible nuance of changing meanings. All was well amongst the various leaders who sought to dissolve the act of reading in favor of hearing and seeing, subordinating reason to the senses, rather than maintaining the formally reversed relationship they shared. But Lord Hitler, until then a valued protege of the hidden power, attempted to institute a single nation covenant and wrestle power from the other elites. But in spite of the setbacks that this entailed, the seeds of conversion had been sown, as countless scores of inferior and superior human stock began casting aside arcane literature and concepts, immersing themselves first in literature, and then only auditory and visual media, that favored the new order. The indoctrination was largely a gradual one, as the accomplices of the hidden power paid lip service to the Covenant of Nations, even naming transitionary New Order organizations, as if favoring the concept. The individual was attacked in favor of the nation, in spite of it being the most essential component, and larger sums were, in turn, used to attack the nation. Those who might have stood against the hidden power, instead, argued about smaller issues that would be used to pit one against many, and many against more still. Eventually the number of diverging opinions on what was once a clearly decided matter brought about the end of loyalty to the Constitution. Just at the dawn of our age, in the time of the human purge, only the adversarial oath keepers and Constitution defenders kept to the clear definition of words. But all of their power, to inspire with their points of clarity and logic could not stand the discerning eye of a majority, for whom words can mean anything, or can be dismissed, if unpleasant to the will of the believer. To you, the faithful, words are a means for filling our day. They hold no truth apart from the subjective will of the speaker. They are useful to the collective, only if they serve the cause of the collective. Beyond that, they have no more meaning than the sound of the wind, beating randomly across the desert sand of Helios 54. As you return to your labors my drones, you may well enjoy the leisure of idle chatter, and you may even discuss the matters of FEMA, but be wary of the danger of seeking higher meaning, and venturing into logical ponderings of the world beyond, for they would ultimately prove to be your undoing.